Hi guys and welcome back for another fly tying tutorial. A couple of weeks ago I did a video on the Magnificent 7 for September. If it had been the Magnificent 8, this fly would have been included. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's on size 10 and it's on a heavy wire in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Semplify Nano Silk. It's at 12 o and as you can see it's black. Now as always with the Nano Silks, first thing to do then is to get a little bit of glue onto the shank of the hook and then that's my scissors, that will not tie thread on. <laughs> Come in with your thread, spread the glue, and get a bit of thread down. Or silk, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to wind it up to just past the point, and then I can take off my rag end. Now, when I said this would make the Magnificent 8, uh, I meant dabblers in general, not this particular pattern. But I just thought I'd share it with you because it does work really well in September. Dabblers are a, a great fly to add to your box. I've got myself uh, some bronze mallard. I've got this one feather which I think is going to do the whole fly. Uh, you'll note that it's quite dark. I like my dabblers dark and sometimes I throw lots of this stuff away because it's just too light. But this this uh, this one's pretty good. I'm going to take away the waist ends at the bottom here. I want the, the more dappled sort of feathers for this. So I'm going to take approximately two centimeters from the bottom. I'll just bring it out at a 90 degree angle from the stock like so, and then just rip it away. I'll put that to the side because I'm going to use the same feather for my wing. Then I can simply fold this in half, like so. And I want to dress it up to the shank of the hook. Now I want my tail to be approximately the same length as the shank. So I've dressed that up. I'm going to hold it on into place. And then just get that locked down. Make sure it's sitting right at the back. And as you come up to the front, Stop well back from the eye and then just remove the excess. Now I'm going to add my wire rib and what I'm using is some 0.14 silver wire. I've already got a little bit off here that I've been working with and I'm going to catch that in on the way back with my silk. And just Check that your thread stopped to approximately where a barb would be on a hook. And next, I'm going to use some claret dubbin. And the dubbin I'm going to use today is from the Simplify Sparkle Collection. And this, the one I've chosen is the claret. Now, it comes out of the tube and it's kind of like this. And the way I like to do it is to dress it up to the, the thread just get a small bit dubbed on like so push it up to the beginning and then get a few turns onto the body of the fly then once I've got that started I can pull the dubbing out and catch it round and turn it into like a rope and then I can use that to come all the way up the body of my fly. Now I just want to stop it well shy of the eye because there's quite a lot goes on at the front of a dabbler and you need that space. So what I'm going to do is just undo my dubbing, capture that in so it's locked into place like any other material would be and then I'll get a few turns in front and I can come in with my snips and just remove that now if you're of a mind to you could come in with a dubbing brush 
and rough this out a bit. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to add a hackle. And the hackle I'm using is from Ban Valley. It's a little pack of genetic capes. You know, if you can't afford to buy a grizzle cape, then these little packs are lifesavers. So I've got a feather I've picked out approximately the size I want and what I'm going to do is just open it up to check yep yeah, that looks good and then I'm going to use my thumbnail to strip away some of the base of the feather now I don't need all that so I've, I've trimmed it to about an eighth of an inch next thing I'm going to do is get some beeswax onto my nano silk this helps grip the material into place and I'm going to lay that stalk on my side and I'm going to capture that in as well as having a little tidy up at the front here so once that's in place I can bring the stalk out at a 90 degree angle I'll just grab my hackle pliers and then I'm going to use them to bring the hackle around one turn where I've set it and then I'm going to move it back in as even turns as I can get oops need to go back there just let the tension go there if you let tension go you're going to be in for a world of hurt so try and keep tension on your material as you're bringing the hackle back now when it comes to the butt end, you can grab your wire, try and wriggle it through the various fibres and make sure you've locked down that first um, turn of feather. Once you've got that into position, you can then come up in not open turns but approximately two or three millimeters apart try and keep it as even as you can although once you've got the under wing and the over wing on a dabbler you see very little of the body so don't get hung up on getting it perfect it's a fishing fly at the end of the day you're not going to stick it in a showcase you're going to stick it on a line and hopefully go and catch some trout with it so I've caught that in, I've caught two or three turns in front of the wire, keep tension on my thread and I'm wriggling that away. Next I just need to take off the butt end of the feather. Now I'm not going to throw this away, I'm going to save this for the end. But what I'm going to do is just expose some of the stock and then put that to the side. Okay, so far so good. Now I want to get all this hackle back out of the way. So I'm just going to use my thumb and forefinger in my left hand and make sure everything is back. Now at this point I'm going to invert my vise. And the first thing I want to do is the under, the under wing. So I'm going to go back to my feather here and I'm going to take approximately two centimetres once more again I'm going to pull it out at a 90 degree angle and rip it from the stem now I'm going to fold this in half I'll try and do it on the camera for you bronze mallard is generally pretty well behaved and, and easy to work with so I've got uh, my two bronze mallard slips what I want to do is I'm going to bring them in just past the bend of the hook. Now everyone likes them different. I like mine quite heavily cloaked. Uh, some people like them sparse. It's just up to yourself. And that's the beauty of tying your own flies I suppose. You get exactly what you want. So I've just caught a couple of turns in front of the material then I can come in and just remove my excess and at this point I can bring my vise back round to the right direction and 
just about not you can't often get everything out of one feather you know very often I'm using two sometimes three feathers to get one fly but on this occasion I found this really good feather and thought it would be good uh, for doing the demo so what's what remains I'm going to take the whole lot which is about four centimeters I would say uh, I've been quite conservative with my tail and my my underwing but I'm going to take all the good barred feathers that remain bleh, sorry tuna wasp there remain and I'm going to fold this in half like so and that's looking pretty good now what I want to do next is dress this up and I want the overwing to be slightly longer than my underwing was so it should be just coming past the body of the fly I'm going to put it over the eye of the hook I'm going to use the thumb and forefinger of my left hand to cloak it round the shank then I'm going to catch that in with two or three turns like so and that's looking not too bad now this part can be a bit dodgy what I'm going to do is come in and trim away the waist now you've got to be very careful you don't want to cut your time thread or silk at this point uh, get yourself a really good sharp pair of scissors and just take your time there's no rush in fly tying just tilt the vice towards me get that last little bit and I'll just take as much as I can away now as you can see there's still quite a lot of mess going on here and I'm going to tidy that up slightly but before I do so I'm going to add some eyes and I like natural jungle cock I think it's much better there is no substitute for it uh, but well there is a substitute and I'm going to use that but uh, the substitute's not a not a mark on the real thing but simplify do uh, some synthetic quills and they come on a little card like this and this is a 17 millimeter small green and I'm going to just take off one off the card I suppose the good thing about the synthetic uh, eyes is that you get consistency so every fly looks exactly the same because you're able to get exactly the same jungle cock eye each time whereas with the natural capes uh, it's often especially my, the capes I've got left my normal jungle cock uh, they're on their last legs actually and uh, getting two feathers the same is a, is a little bit of a challenge now if I'm perfectly honest so the synthetic capes a lot easier to work with just tilt the device slightly so I can catch in the eye on your side uh, let me see if that's sitting right looks okay and then once again I'm going to come in with my sharp snips just take away the excess and I'm not quite happy with how that's sitting on your side so I'm just going to ease it up a little bit and that looks a bit better while I've got the vice there I can lift that up and snip away the excess now as you can see there's a whole lot going on at the front here and uh, that's the reason I like to use the nano silk uh, because what I can do now is come in right in at the eye and start to build a head and not only that it gives me a chance to tidy this area up without making the head overly large you still want a reasonably neat head and that's that's considering how much material is in the front here that's provided me with quite a small head on the fly quick finish 